<laughs> Mark Pocan, uh, and, uh, and the congressman is the co-chair of the Progressive Caucus. You, you joined the Progressive Caucus right away when you got to, got to the Capitol. Then you had to come recruit you. First one. What? First one. He was the first one to sign up for the Progressive Caucus. When you were <laughs> I especially like the ones that don't have to be recruited. Yeah. Or, Mark? Yeah, go ahead. And uh, she's, she's I don't know he's, he's going to say it, but he might. As a freshman, in front of as a freshman uh, my friend has undertaken the responsibility on Thursdays or Wednesdays after votes uh, to have the progressive hour on, on c yeah, he's going to manage that. And he's going to manage that. I think that's uh, a big deal. So, we recognize him as a heavy lifter. Uh, but this is actually a challenge for you. You're a new progressive congressman. You are an, you are an openly gay man, married to your partner, went up to Canada and got mar get married. Um, so the gay community would love to be, you'd love you to just step up and be the perfect champion there. Um, you were in the Wisconsin legislature, a great champion on rights of rape victims and women's issues, one of the leading members of the legislature on that and women's community would love if you would step up there. Uh, you are a union painter. You're a member of your union, very, very active in it. So your union, yeah, the union, so your unions would love it if you would just step up and be the union guy. Um, you are a small business owner, and so progressive small business folks would love it if you would just stand up and be the progressive small business guy. You understand what I'm saying? How do you, as you go into this game, sort it out and figure out where, where is your focus going to be, and how do you how do you reconcile it all and pick an agenda that you go in, not just the right way with the Well, let me tell you, my vast uh, two weeks, two days, and two hours of experience that I had, um, let me offer, I guess, an uh, answer this way, John. You know, in, the, in the Wisconsin legislature, I spent 14 years, and you know, I always realized that unless we got more progressives and more people who think like me there, we weren't going to get a lot done. And so I always worked actively to do that. And I try to represent um, our progressive values by getting on the finance committee, which in Wisconsin was, you know, did our budget. So one of the things I was happy to be on is the budget committee now here in U.S. Congress, so that we can talk from a pro progressive perspective about those issues. Because I completely agree with Raul. I mean, this is all about jobs and the economy and those fundamental bread and butter issues, uh, not about what uh, we, the Republicans, want to talk about, which are this fake debt ceiling. I agree with Congressman Adler. Let's just get rid of that. That's just a stupid. Uh, idea that's out there. You're just throwing that comment off. People should understand what you're saying. There is a proposal by Congressman Jerry Nadler and a group of other progressive members of Congress to pass a new law that simply says the debt ceiling no longer exists. Yeah. We don't have to go yeah. And Mark yeah. is saying that he and Mark, and I think Congressman Hall and others are supporting this effort and saying, look, this is bogus. We, we allocate money to spend. We will pay our debts. And we don't, we're not going to that's already been allocated, and yeah. they're having the fight. So, uh, but I think you know one of the things that I said during the campaign was I wanted to join the Progressive Caucus, and that's why I guess I was the first person to join because I realized the way you have power is to get uh, enough folks who think alike working with the groups on the outside, the grassroots inside outside strategy to get something done. And I look at uh, I think the healthcare debate had some real positive signs when they had that letter that was signed by it was about 114 people. It gave the president the ability to negotiate a little stronger because he, instead of having the conservative Dems, the blue dogs, hold all of us hostage, uh, we could say, say maybe you won't have our votes if you don't have at least this in there. And I think that if we can work with the Progressive Caucus on messaging, uh, we can make sure we're working with our friends on the outside. Uh, we're working right now with Move to Amend on a bill that uh, hopefully about the next month we'll get out there on a should, constitutional amendment. Yeah, you should tell everybody what that uh, Essentially saying that uh, corporations aren't people and that money is not free speech. And uh, we need to... <laughs> now, having said that, John, there's about at least 15 measures like that out there around Citizens United, and maybe that's one of the fundamental parts that I look at maybe coming new in, but sometimes, you know, I love our progressive community, but we need to get a little more together sometimes. I mean, to me, it's always been about getting people to talk, but also getting groups to talk together. So one of the things that I get a, a great opportunity to work with John's uh, wife, Mary Batari, on at the Center for Media and Democracy is they're the lead group behind um, uh, AlecExposed.org, um, the group Alec. And uh, as a state legislator, uh, years ago, about a decade ago, I saw stuff coming from them, realized there was a problem, so I joined ALEC to get the password to give to all the progressive groups in Washington to download their model legislation. 
So it's kind of like, you know, being a little creative about things, how to get in there and do that. And then, you know, John and I talked about this often over the years, and we're like, John's like, why don't you go to a convention? Well, sure, John, thanks. So I would go to the convention, and oh, I went to the Alec convention. Yeah, the Alec convention, undercover, now dressed like, I guess, a member of Congress, but I never used to wear ties. But I, uh, I did the undercover, you know, went in, and uh, worked at that time with very few folks. And so now we finally have a really great coalition. This last summer in Salt Lake City, uh, we had um, uh, Common Cause, um, so many of the national groups were there, we actually had a teach-in about ALEC. But it's trying to organize our groups on the outside, also with those of us on the inside to get something done. So a uh, long answer to your question, John, is how I pick my priorities. I want to move uh, the progressive movement forward in Congress. And I think one of the best ways I can do that is by being a member, an active member, of the Progressive Caucus. We have our retreat this week. But uh, it, it's also letting all those groups understand that we're all related together. And I think uh, the last thing I'll say is Tammy Baldwin, uh, who is a, she and I were on the Tammy Baldwin, absolutely, uh, media center. She and I, 21 years ago, were on the County Board of Supervisors together. We've been good friends. I helped her get elected to the legislature and to Congress. One of the things that she did that was different, and I think it's a real lesson for us, is, you know, people always said there's so many Democrats, there's so many Republicans, and then there's the, you know, independents in the middle, the, the moderates, you know, appeal to half of them to win an election. And Tammy's model always was different than that. She appealed to the people who don't always vote. And she went beyond that normal 50% who did and reached out to people who feel disinfected and, and, and connected them. So uh, by doing that, reaching out to labor and the LGBT community and people of color and, and all the different folks that we need to to bring together, um, she did that. And her turnout in her election in Milwaukee was 87% this fall. And that's part of why Tammy Baldwin's in the U.S. Senate from a state that elected Scott Walker just two years ago. So the more we realize that, that by connecting our friends, our groups together, that an issue that attacks my uh, equal rights as a gay man uh, is no different than an attack on collective bargaining that attacks people's ability to fight for their wages, uh, is no different than the fight that every single person should have access to health care. And we need to connect everyone to realize it's a common fight against those who have uh, corporate and moneyed interests. If we do that, we'll be successful.